Well, it is time for everyone to begin punching their tickets to NASCAR Championship Weekend right here at Phoenix Raceway. And the first and foremost, the first guys they'll be able to punch their tickets coming up this Saturday at Texas Motor Speedway in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. And to join us on the inside lane, he is the 2017 ARCA East Series Champion, a 2012 USAC Quarter Midget Western World Series Champion, and a four-time winner in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Driver of the Joe Gibbs Racing number 20 Toyota Camry from Huntersville, North Carolina, it's Harrison Burden. Man, Harrison, that was for a, joining me. That was an intro. I felt like, you know, like the UFC fighters, Bruce Buffer's up there yelling at him. I was ready to go for that. That was good. Well, I appreciate that. And I mean, you might actually get intros like that since, you know, you've kind of been digging into the, the, the MMA world a little bit. But we'll get to that in a moment because when you look at this round of eight, it was magical for you last year. Two wins, but you weren't in the playoffs, but now you get to come to these tracks in the playoffs, actually. But most importantly, happy 21st birthday, man. You turned 21 on Saturday. How's the big 2-1 been treating you so far? Well, I don't really feel that different. I, uh, I didn't do anything that fun or crazy for it. I was racing on my 21st birthday uh, at the Roval, so... I was trying to get into this next round because, like you said, this is an awesome round for me statistically, um, and our team is, is really excited now that we have a chance to kind of win and punch our ticket to Phoenix and uh, have, a, have a chance to race for a championship. Man, it's exciting. So um, our whole team is fired up, and, and now we have a, a shot at it this year. Instead of the bittersweet, we got eliminated, but we still won the two races, right? Now we can just go and try and get locked in as it is. Two wins last season in this round, and then over at Kansas, an 11th place finish. So not too bad. He went back-to-back -back win to Texas and Martinsville. But one of the most fun aspects about you, of course, your mom made headlines a lot last year. She'd freak out in the pit box. Then, of course, uh, your dad has to be slightly more composed. Jeff Burton, the former NASCAR star, now in the NBC booth. And I'm just curious because I know that you and him, it, it's still dad and son when you guys are together, when you guys are at home, but even at the racetrack, because he's actually contractually obligated to be at your races nowadays, or at least the second half of the season. What is your interactions like with him when you're at the racetrack and he is Mr. Analyst and you're Mr. Race Car Driver? Hey man, he, I'm, he's like my toughest critic. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's, he's awesome. He's awesome dad. I, I love my dad and I, I uh, have a great relationship with him, obviously. Uh, him and my mom both, but the, I always give him a really hard time because he, uh, he likes to try and like, he does not want to talk about me or my cousin Jeb as much as possible because he doesn't want to be biased, you know, and it's the right thing to do. Um, but I give him a hard time. Like you gotta give me a little credit up there, man. <laughs> Actually, uh, last year at Texas, I passed someone on a last lap to win. And the first thing he said up in the booth was that he felt bad for the guy I passed. I'm like, come on, man, you gotta give me some props. <laughs> like that's brutal. So um it's it's awesome it's fun because my dad was always so busy and I was busy as a kid racing and um you know we weren't we weren't really around each other a ton not that he was not at the house as much as possible and doing what he had to do to be the best dad he could be but his job was demanding right so um it was always you know he would make time as much as possible and and that was what he could do and now it's like man I see him every every day of the week almost and we go to the racetracks and he's there. It's, it's really cool. So it's, it's been fun. And moving forward into next year, he now will have the opportunity to watch you race a legendary Wood Brothers machine, that number 21, in the NASCAR Cup Series. He's going to watch you do that. And besides him asking you to mow the lawn on national television, how do you think that you've affected him, both professionally as even a driver and an analyst, but also as a dad, because he's now watching you go through your childhood racing and now you're about to go to the top level of NASCAR. How have you affected him, do you think? I don't know. That's a good question. I, I feel like that my dad was always, I never thought about it like that. Because to me, he was always the man and, and he was always the toughest guy in the world. And, and every son feels that way about their dad, right? That, and uh, so I always felt like I just wanted to be like my dad. And I looked up to him a lot. And now, you know, getting to kind of do what he did not because he did it, but because I love to do it. Um, but we share a passion, right? And so it's exciting for me to kind of get to the same level that he got to and that I never really felt like I would get to. Um, not because I didn't believe in myself, but just because it's so hard and, and it seems so far-fetched to say that, you know, I want, I'm going to race in the Cup Series and uh, it's coming true. So that's, that's really exciting. And 
Um, I've never thought about it that way. I, that's that's a good question because I I don't know. I've I've always thought that he was always the one kind of changing me. I don't know if I was the one changing him, right? Yeah, I I would ask him that question because I can definitely assure you that you probably have in many ways. And this entire racing family is honestly ridiculous because you have your dad, NASCAR star. You have your uncle, also NASCAR star, Ward Burden. And then you have to deal with your cousin, Jeb, not just as a competitor, but this year as a championship competitor. So, you know, not everyone's close with their uncles or cousins, extended family, if you will. But, I mean, you guys have this incredible ability to bond over what you guys do. Racing is your guys' life. So I'm curious, your relationship with Ward, maybe you've went on some crazy excursions with the Bear Grylls of North Carolina, if you will. And then, of course, what's it like racing against Jeb, seeing him at the track, his family, and also as one of the guys you're racing for a championship against? Well, it's crazy. Um, and it's crazy because my dad and my uncle, they grew up racing against each other and had to race each other at cup, in the cup races and, you know, in the Xfinity races and at short tracks all over. And, and they kind of always had stories about, oh, it's tough to race Ward or it's tough to race Jeff. Here's why. And they would laugh about it. And now it's like, gosh, me and Jeff are doing the exact same thing. You know, last, last weekend he was, you know, on the cut line uh, to get out of the playoffs. And I was on the other end of it and we were basically racing each other to end each other's seasons. It's like, gosh, this is tough because, you know, I care for my cousin. I want him to do well. He wants me to do well, but now only one of us could make it. So, uh, that was a tough situation to be in. Uh, but it is, it is what it is. This is racing and, and it's a business and, uh, it's, it's, it's a strange feeling to like to race against him and, and take stuff away from him. That's what you're doing, right? It's easy when it's some other guy, it's like, oh yeah, I'm going to take that win from him. And, uh, I don't care. Right. But when it's your own family, it's kind of something you think about a little more. And is this something where you guys talk about the racetrack away from the racetrack when you're together, just out and about, or do you guys just speak about random family things? Do you ever take the racetrack away from the racetrack? Uh, quite a bit. Yeah. Me and Jed talk a lot about racing, uh, away from the racetrack. Um, mostly just the ins and outs of the sport, right? Like what's going on with sponsorship situations, what's going on with this, what's going on with that, you know, how can, we help each other and, and do what we need to do. That's what we've been kind of bonding over recently uh, because it's really challenging to navigate this sport as a career. It's, it's not very forgiving. You can lose your job at any moment. And so uh, trying to just keep us both in the sport and trying to help each other out as much as possible has been good. Um, and that's, that's kind of the main things we talk about. And then Jeb likes to talk some trash to me about racing. Uh, he likes to send me some text saying that he's going to crash me and all that, but he never does it. <laughs> Chat with Harrison Byrne here, the driver for Joe Gibbs Racing, number 20, Toyota Camry. And I I'm going to be honest here because this is kind of weird. Um, of course, we're going to a Phoenix Raceway for the Xfinity Series Championship, but I saw on a website last year that was dated back in 2016 that Phoenix Raceway is one of your favorite tracks. You haven't been there a ton in your career because the series that you've ran doesn't necessarily go there. And the honest part of this is I can't find that website again this year. I found it last year. I can't find it again this year. So I'm curious if that is still true because I know that Iowa, I think, is now on the top of your list on some of your other websites and whatnot. But uh, if Phoenix is still one of your favorite tracks, uh, I'm just curious as to why, if that's still true. It's definitely up there. It's I always change my answers based off of where I ran well at most recently, right? So you're going to try and find it, and I'll say one thing, and then I'll say another thing. And it's all based off of if I won there recently or if I ran with there really well there recently. Uh, that's my new favorite, right? And so Phoenix has always been awesome because of the racing. Uh, the restarts are insane. As a driver, there's nothing crazier than – you know, the, we cut to the dog leg after the first restart and you look to your right and there's like six guys like lined up on your outside and you're all going in the same corner. Like, how do we, all right, there's no way we're going to make this work. And uh, that's exhilarating. That's fun. And it's always somewhere that kind of pushes you to make moves that are dangerous because, you know, not, not dangerous physically, but to, dangerous to ending your race because it's so hard to pass. Um, because of the, you know, the PJ1 has been applied around the top now, um, that you have to really drive it into the bottom of the corner and slide up in front of some guy, and barely not hit the wall. I mean, it's great. So I love it. I love racing there. And uh, yeah, if, if I win, then it'll be my new favorite. <laughs>
Well, sounds good. It would be quite the, quite the way to win, especially if you're able to lock into that championship four. And a little bit more about you, because I know that you love hunting and whatnot. And away from the track, I mean, the track is your home. That's where you grew up. But I want to go back onto, first of all, you're doing some MMA fighting after your, uh, your altercation earlier this year. I, I saw an interview that, uh, that the TRD team decided to get you some trainers. But I want to go even further back into high school, because you played lacrosse, and I don't see a lot of athletes change from either playing like lacrosse in high school to go do something else. Like lacrosse is pretty niche. So I'm kind of curious, is there anything that you can take from the world of lacrosse or playing or mental, physical aspects and take that into the cockpit of a race car? I think so. You know, team sports teach you a lot. And I learned a lot. I went to an awesome school with awesome teachers and learned a lot um at school but I feel like I learned a lot about myself a lot more about myself in racing and in lacrosse because of the situations that you find yourself in that you're like oh my gosh this is awful and how do I get through this and and you find a way to kind of get through it and you're like oh maybe I'm I'm tougher than I thought I was or maybe I'm you know able to do more than I thought I could and, and it builds your confidence right so I think that's the biggest thing is, is understanding how hard you can push yourself, understanding how a team works and, and understanding, you know, as a athlete, you are a part of a bigger picture and that's your crew chief and your spotter and your engineer and your, you know, your road crew guys and then the shop guys and, and having them all behind you and, and all that stuff. I think I learned a lot from playing lacrosse on, on how to kind of work with a team. Um, and then just being mean. Lacrosse is kind of a mean sport, and so is racing. So uh, I guess that's something I could take, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, real quick before I let you go, got to do a segment I do with every single driver. It's called Quick Time. Got some rapid-fire questions for you. Looking for some rapid-fire answers in return. You ready to set Quick Time, Harrison? Let's do it. All right, we touched on this already, but I want to know now, your favorite track to race at regardless of the car? Regardless of the car, my favorite track to race at is probably Homestead. All right, why Homestead? Ripping the lip up there on the wall. That's it. That's the whole reason. It's so fun to go up there and just be that close to the wall. But then now I'm thinking I changed my answer to Darlington because the same reason. <laughs> I don't know. I'm all over the place on it. I can't pick. Whatever works. And like I said, hopefully Phoenix is the number one here in a couple weeks, and I'll talk to you again after the race, and we'll, we'll find out if that answer has changed or not. Uh, how about your favorite Jeff Burden paint scheme? My favorite Jeff Burton paint scheme was the purple Prilosec uh lightning car he won at texas in it and i was seven i think and that was like the coolest thing in the world like my dad's car had lightning all over it and he won the race and so that was my favorite as a kid growing up and now i'm kind of partial to it still just because of that that's awesome i know that's also a fan favorite too how about your favorite method of hunting so recently i haven't been able to go hunting enough uh i need to talk to jeb but I've been really trying to get into bow hunting. Uh, I've been practicing. I, I bought a, a bow recently. And so I've um, been, been trying to get into that more and more. It's really hard throughout the season. But in the winter months, I'm going to try and do whatever I can to get into bow hunting and, and see what I can do. Yeah, I think I saw some Instagram pictures of you starring out there. That will be cool to see. Last one for you. All right. If you have a chance to race for a championship at Phoenix Raceway in the Xfinity Series, at Phoenix Raceway, what do you think will be the biggest obstacle to overcome that weekend? The biggest obstacle is going to be uh, executing on restarts. So, you know, track position is everything. The restarts are crazy. What do you do when you go into turn one and you're – three wide, you know, as a championship contender, you have to lay it all on the line to win the race. You have to win the race. And so, um, man, you got to be so aggressive that it's on the borderline of making a mistake. Um, and that's hard. That's a high pressure situation where your whole season is on one race. And so I think that's the biggest thing is, is executing throughout the restarts and, and getting out of there with a uh, track position and then go take it to them. All right, Harrison, we will let you go off of that. And, hey, hopefully you're able to lock into that championship four, and we will see you here at Phoenix Raceway racing for a championship. And maybe we'll just chat again on that big old stage afterwards on that Saturday night. Sound good? That sounds like a plan to me, my brother. I, I think it's going to be a, uh, an awesome chance for us to get to, to try and do that. And if we can, then we're going to go take it to them. This is the Inside Lane on Sports 360 AZ. Keep it to Sports 360 AZ as we prepare for NASCAR Championship Weekend at Phoenix Raceway.